I have quite a sad story for you here about Hillary Clinton. The Hill explains for us. Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton's newest book sold fewer than 3,000 copies in its first week on sale. The book titled Stronger Together outlines policies Clinton would pursue if she were elected president. According to the Times, a book's first week uh, sales normally make up about a third of the total sold. The book features a photo of Clinton and her running mate, Senator Tim Kaine, on the cover and labels it a blueprint for America's future. It gives readers, quote, specific and practical solutions while also articulating a bold and expansive vision of change and renewal. And it runs about 250 pages. Okay, um, I need everybody to understand just how sad this actually is. They're saying that represents a third of the total sales. Roughly speaking. So whatever you sell in your first week, that's about a third of what you're going to sell the entire time your book is out there. She just sold 3,000. You do the math. You're going to sell 9,000 books? And you're running for president. 9,000? Okay. Guys. Do me a favor. <laughs> Look below me right now. What's that number you got there with subscribers on YouTube that I have? If I decided, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book, and guys, it'll be out in a year, and I plug it a few times. Not cra Nothing crazy, but every now and then, oh, by the way, I have a book coming out on X, Y, and Z, and it'll come out this date. I guarantee you I'd sell more than 3,000 books in the first week. And I'm, it's not, I'm not a fucking A-list celebrity. I'm not a B-list celebrity. I'm not a C-list celebrity. She's supposedly an A-list celebrity running for fucking president, you're going to only sell 3,000 books. Okay, no, but you have to understand. People say, okay, Kyle, you're taking this too far. This isn't that big a deal. No, it is. Because what it shows you is, it's window dressing, man. This idea, this facade of Hillary Clinton as like, Oh, Hillary, you're just so amazing and special. Okay, no, she coasted off of her name recognition from being First Lady, then being Senator from New York, then being Secretary of State. So people vaguely, oh yeah, I, I know who she is, you know? And then, it, just based off that, and Democratic loyalists, who just kind of, you know, blindly, oh, okay, I'm voting down the line Democrat, let's move along here. Just based off that, she was able to beat, you know, a thousand-year-old Jewish, maybe atheist, <laughs> Democratic Socialist senator from Vermont who, like, eight people knew. And he still got, what, 46, 47% of the vote thereabouts? Ooh, wow! So the, the more they learned about you and the more they heard you speak, the less they liked you. The more they learned about him, the more they liked him. So it, it's... It's all a fucking... It, it's smoke and mirrors. This idea of her is like, oh my God, she's so much support. Oh, there's so much support. There's no doubt that there's an enthusiasm gap here. And obviously Trump supporters, while, I mean, technically and literally, according to the polls, they are fewer in number, the ones that are supporters of Trump are way more enthusiastic about it. <laughs> People are like, yeah, Hillary, whatever. Anyway, what's for dinner? <laughs> With Trump, uh, Trump, uh, Trump, 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 Trump. With Bernie Sanders, oh, please, don't even get me started. There were the stories of people literally... Fainting at his rallies. So, with Hillary, you're running for president and you sell 3,000 books when you release a book. I'm telling you, man, all these little things, all these little things add up, and I haven't even touched, although I did yesterday and I talk about it all the time, how they tipped the scales against Bernie in the primary. Uh, the DNC did, Hillary Clinton did, so on and so forth. So you're only going to sell 3,000 copies of your book. These are all red flags, man. And you know what it is? The thing about Hillary Clinton is it's, you can smell the insinc insincerity from miles away. <laughs> I mean, she, you know, she's running as a 1980s style politician in the year 2016. That's what it is. Like, when she gives a speech, you can see, okay, not that I never care. Oh, my God, Obama's using a teleprompter, the argument that the people on the right used to make. That, okay, that doesn't mean anything. 
but how you deliver your speech, your rhythm, your cadence, what you're saying, that all does matter because that all does affect people in a certain way. You know when somebody's connecting with you and when they're not connecting with you. When I deliver a story here, as I do all the time, and I'm going through the parts of the story that I'm quoting from the article, there's some you gotta focus more to carry along. When I'm just talking to you like I'm talking right now, it's easier to follow along because I'm connecting with you as opposed to just fucking robotically reading something. With Hillary Clinton, there's all there's that permanent fucking barrier between you and her where she's talking, but she's she's talking at you and she's going through the motions, but there's no fucking connection there. There's no there there. There's no let me, I care about the substance, I care about the people, I care about these policies. And that's why most of the time in the primary, let me give you vague, you know, policy positions. Not even policy positions. Let me just give you, you know, platitudes and cliches and generalities. And it, it was never, like Bernie said, All right, we need to raise the marginal tax rate to 52% on people making above a million dollars a year. Like, it was always specific, 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 and he cared about it. Hillary, mm, okay, we need to be, like, stronger together and whatnot. And let's go ahead and break down those barriers, because there's a lot of barriers. <laughs> What are you saying? It's just your fucking just platitudes, one after the other. And this is why millennials look at you and they're like, I'm supposed to vote for her? <laughs> I know she doesn't give a fuck about this. I know she doesn't. I, that's why the book's fucking name is Stronger Together. A blueprint for America's future. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, you gotta do better. You gotta do better. And again, so people look at her and they see the old-timey, old-school politician. They see the person who's going through the motions. And it is Kabuki Theater. I am a politician and I care about you, I promise. And here I am going to do the politician point like this, where I don't point at you, but I do this. And it's even rehearsed my fucking hand motions. Oh, God, stop it. Stop it. And this is why you only sold fucking 3,000 books as you're running for president. <laughs> it's just... At, it's disastrous, it's pathetic, there's no enthusiasm, and don't you dare for a second try to blame anybody else but Hillary Clinton. Don't- but, 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 but. It's her goddamn fault, okay? It's her fault. It's her fault because also, let's face it, there are many all of her detractors, many of her detractors know, you got the Clinton Foundation, you got pay to play, you got corruption, you got her and, her, her and Bill taking over three billion dollars in their careers from all different special interests, and that includes the Clinton Foundation, that includes to the their uh, super PACs, that includes to their campaigns, that includes directly into their pocket in the form of speeches that she gives to, like, Goldman Sachs, as she pretends like she's against Wall Street. So people look at it, they go, yeah, stop, this is, this kind of politics is eventually going to die because millennials are saying, fuck off, <laughs> no more. I was, polls came out this morning, only 52% of Bernie supporters are going to vote for Hillary as of right now. 52%, man. That's, that's not a thing. Like, in the past, okay, Democratic, your Democratic candidate lost, you go to the other Democratic candidate. There is a specific dislike for this one. That number's really low, 52%. 36% are gonna vote for uh, Gary Johnson or Jill Stein when you talk about the millennial um, Bernie supporters. Well, you know, I'm, I'm done with HRC. Forget that. So, this is a kind of politician and a kind of politics that's gonna die. And, you know, I was talking about this the other night, not to link in something totally unrelated, even though that's exactly what I'm going to do. But, like, I was watching, Keith Olbermann is out with this new show. And he's doing, like, it's called The Closer, the Closer and it's on GQ, their um, YouTube channel. Now, it's also hilarious that at one point he ended up ripping <laughs> the Young Turks. Uh, because, you know, they went back online, they've always kind of been online, that's their home. He was, like, mocking them when they did that after they left Current. Uh, and now, where's Keith? Oh, that's right, he's online. <laughs> because online it was the future, and it is the future. So he's doing this show, and I remember back in, you know, the early 2000s when he's railing against Bush on TV, he was a lone voice in the wilderness that was somewhat liberal, and his voice was crucial. Because he's out there, you know, talking against the Iraq war, he's saying this, he's saying that, he's not, he's no holds barred. And you're like, oh my god, this is great, finally somebody's saying, you know, the war's bad, when it was just wall-to-wall -wall positive coverage for the longest time. So his voice was super important then. Today, I, w I watched some of his show the uh, uh, last night. It it's just stale, and it's partisan, and it's you know it's that old timey thing. 
And that old timey thing is going away, man. And this is no disrespect for Keith, because again, there was a time his voice was super important. But you just get the sense of like, it's dying. This str the stream of consciousness talking that actually e Trump does pretty well. That's the new thing. Like, that's the new kind of thing that resonates. Back in the day, it used to be the I'm Ronald Reagan and I'm reading shit. Flowery words and rhetoric. Today, if you try to speak like that, people are like, what is that guy doing? <laughs> Why is he talking like that? That doesn't what's he say? Why is he saying that? What's he doing? He's like a fucking he's a bad actor, is what it is. Which he literally was in the case of Ronald Reagan. That doesn't fly anymore, man. So, like Keith Olbermann, you're reading off a prompter, you're going through the motions, you know, like he is with his new show, just like he did his old show. People are like, I don't know about that. And also, let's face it, back in the day, it was the case that he was being a Dem partisan in 2005 wasn't a horrible thing because you were doing that specifically to fight against Bush and Cheney's neoconservatism. So there was a rationale to being a Dem partisan back then. If you're a Dem partisan in 2016, you're actually more in defense of neoconservatism, because Hillary's kind of like a neocon. So there's also that substantive difference. And he also was, you know, kind of anti-Bernie in the primary, which shows something about the kind of liberal you supposedly are. So there's those problems too, but just in the style and the delivery, he has issues now, just like HRC has issues now, and that kind of politician is going away because millennials can't stand it, and they're right to not stand it. And uh, apparently, even people in general now are kind of having trouble digesting it, which is why Hillary only sold 3,000 copies of her book when she's supposed to be selling probably, what, hundreds of thousands?